Like veggie spaghetti and infuse it too? Um, yeah, so actually I had this whole plan, see, like I had made this like homemade sauce that I had like made it in bulk. So I like I had stored some in my freezer, right? Uh -huh. So like I took it out of my freezer this morning and I like set it on the counter and was like, don't forget the spaghetti sauce. And I totally forgot the spaghetti sauce. So we're gonna use jarred sauce for the sauce, which is totally fine because like I figure not everybody makes uh, homemade spaghetti sauce. But what what makes it special though is we're making zucchini noodles. Right, exactly. In, so instead of regular noodles. Zucchini. She yes. loves zucchini. I do, I love zucchini, it's so good. Plus, I just got this new spiralizer, which I've been having a lot of fun with. Um, I made curly fries yesterday. Say, the first thing you always want to do is make the fries. Oh yeah. I well, go for a healthy option on the apples. Actually, just I'm just going to be real. It, potatoes were the only like whole food vegetable that I had in my house yesterday because I go grocery shopping tomorrow. So yeah, I like actually had to pick these up today. So, so you, you use those because you couldn't help yourself from using the... the I mean, no, because like who would not want to eat curly fries? <laughs> well, that's true, especially if you got the means and ways. Exactly. So I'm really having a lot of fun with this. If uh, later on after the show, I will put a link in the comments of the video on Facebook for like how you can get one if you want one. Nobody's paying me for this. It's definitely not sponsored. But if you want to sponsor this, feel hey. free to message me. But um, it was super cheap. It was like $18.99 or $17.99 or something. And it has like a bunch of settings. But anyway, so we're going to play with this thing today. Um, and also, I figured that we've done, I think, two or three different kinds of spaghetti on the show, now that I think about it. Nice. But he, how many people eat spaghetti, like, at, like, all, like once a week? Because, like, I know I'm not the only one who eats spaghetti, like, a lot. Depends what, what budget you're working on. <laughs> I mean, yeah, that too. But, like, it's one of those foods that, like, especially if you're really busy, and you and you want to go out of your way to make like homemade sauce if you just make like a big pot of it you can freeze it into like little small containers like that right. for whatever size family right. you have bigger ones if you have a large family and like stick it in your freezer and then any of those nights that you're like what am i gonna make for dinner like anybody can make noodles like really quickly like you know what i mean i know girl i've seen some people out there make some noodles i mean yeah that's true but like <laughs> just like i'm not gonna get into all that on this show but like if you want to seriously know how to make noodles then just google that that's what it's an amazing thing you can google. youtube it like you used to mean this so. right exactly <laughs> do that do that um but anyway, yeah, so I turned the stove up a little bit. We are gonna use infused olive oil for this, but we're not, that's what I use a lot. But we're not gonna add it until the end. Also, I have promised someone here that I would not infuse it until I pulled some out for them. So um, we're gonna make the zucchini noodles today, but this is super easy. So like, I'm gonna show you one and then I'm totally gonna let you play with it because it's really oh fun. Oh my God. Um, so all you have to do is just cut off you probably don't even have to cut off this end. I'm just like extra. But basically you cut off the two ends of the zucchini. And then you do, I don't really know what the point of this little slit is, but this is what the book said to do. <laughs> so then you just cut like a slit down the middle. So just and, a line on like on any Yeah, side. just like a line on it. And so then this is the five millimeter blade. So these should be like decent sized noodles. I've got the cutting board under it, but it's not very, that's the one flaw to this design I will say is that it, it's not easy to get it to like catch on something. Like I had a bowl at home and a lot of it was still going right here. Oh, like there's nothing where it's dropping into. Right, it, like, so that's the one flaw of the, like the cheaper design is that it, like, it doesn't seem to have like. Oh, so um, the more expensive design got that. I've seen it on some of them, but like, am I really trying to pay like, 20 extra dollars for a cup, like it's not a big deal for me to just move them. So Let's see how they do you though. See you attach it on there and then you attach it on there and then you literally just hold it <laughs> and push it and then see them coming out. Okay. Can we zoom that? Cause it looks really cool. <laughs> So one of the things that it's doing, if you notice the like core coming out of the center, is that it's not um, really getting a lot of the seeded part. It's mostly just getting around the edges so the noodles are like firmer than they would be um, otherwise. So I'm just gonna add some of them to here because I don't have a bowl big enough to catch all of these. Um, so yeah, and if you don't cut it, it will make huge giant noodles. But like, I like huge giant noodles, so I think it's fun. Yeah, so keep going. Can you turn that hot plate down a little bit? That's 
And you can do this with like carrots or like potatoes or sweet potatoes. If you like beets, you can do it with beets. I despise them, but. It's a zucchini's penis. Yeah. <laughs> well, he's not very happy to see you. <laughs> as soon as he said that, the, the literally went down. <laughs> So how many would you recommend to do if you want to get like a regular family of four? So I'd probably recommend like four zucchini, so like one zucchini per person, because like I was buying the packaged ones for my family, and then they were like $3 a package, and it was taking like a minimum of three packages to feed us and have lunch the next day. So like I was spending like nine bucks on one meal when this thing was like 18, so like... I would say probably like one zucchini per person because when you eat it, you don't get as full as you would from regular noodles right away. So you might want to eat like more, but that's fine. If and anybody that tells you you can eat too much zucchini is a liar, I would question them. Girl, it sounds like a trap. You're trying to infuse it and you're trying to feed them zucchini. It's like you're saying you're not going to get full on it and then you're going to get, you know, the munchies later. Well, that's I true. See, I see your method. <laughs> so you're going to want to, like, you may want to do what I'm suggesting as far as infusing it afterwards, like after it's cooked through, and just infusing it in your bowl. Like, we're literally just going to mix olive oil into it. Like, that's it. Like, I've told you guys before, you can literally infuse anything. Half the time, people, like, new, like, edible businesses and stuff come out, and they make all these new, what they, you know, what people think are new products. And they're like, oh, that's the coolest thing I've ever seen. And I'm like, literally, you can infuse anything. Like, there are some people who make amazing, great food, and I'm not knocking that at all. But there's nothing innovative about infusing it because, like, anybody can do that. Right, um, right. So, like, if somebody makes banging food and you love their product, that's awesome. If you don't want to fuss with making it or you don't want to fuss with making oil, that's fine. But it's just not innovative to, like, like infuse mac and cheese. Like, every time I make it, people are like, that's the coolest thing I've ever seen in my life. And I'm just like, it's basically homemade mac and cheese, but instead of adding all the butter, I added some oil. That's it. Infused right. oil. So I, if I you can... What, I think what like trips people up is like the process of making it. Like everyone comes up with these ideas, like infuse this, infuse that, but... That's why we do this show. So exactly. I'm showing you that you can literally infuse anything extremely easy. And this one was definitely for more of the like health conscious people because the last couple of weeks I've clearly been getting high when I come up with ideas for the show <laughs> because I've basically been making nothing but fat kid food. So I decided to go back to making healthier food, which we did do the first several shows, so... Although, this one suggested pancakes, and I was like, yeah, we already did that. I still have a whole bottle of that infused syrup at home, though. Oh, my God. So maybe we should come up with something else to put syrup on. See? That's what I mean. Like, what else could you put syrup on? We could infuse that. So I made two zucchini right now, and that's probably enough for how many people are here. If I need to make another one, I will. So this is just a jarred sauce. If you Do you know how to make homemade sauce? Oh, no. I heard it's like a... a no, girl, don't be It's not me super hard. It's not super hard. Uh -uh. Get a pin. If you're watching, get a pin. If you don't have a pin, rewind this later and write it down. So all you need to make a big pot of spaghetti sauce is whatever meat of choice. If you don't want meat, use veggies. Use mushrooms, zucchini, onions, bell peppers, garlic, pretty carrots, pretty much any kind of like veggies that you want as like that used to be alive. your meaty base. <laughs> um, the peppers, onions, and garlic you should add regardless. Then you're going to do two of the large jars, the like, I think 28 ounce jars, the big cans. Of what? Of, the, of diced tomatoes, okay. crushed tomatoes, tomato sauce, and then two small jars or cans of tomato paste. And then you season it as you want. A good base is black pepper, garlic powder, onion powder, Italian seasoning, and crushed red pepper. But you can switch that up how you want to. I also suggest you add a teaspoon of sugar into your sauce. People think I'm crazy when I say that. You need it to cut through the bitterness of the tomatoes. I heard about that sugar stuff. And see, my old coworker, she's Italian, and she was the first one to roll my eyes at me with that kind of stuff. So for it's not exactly the ingredients. It's more the process of how you make right. it. If you're making it from fresh tomatoes, you definitely like don't need to add sugar. But the canned tomatoes, I'm sure a lot of people know that. So, like so it just has that bittery that. taste. Yeah, metallic taste. Same thing but if you beans. read a jar of spaghetti sauce, every single jar has sugar. So like don't be fooled that like this is a crazy thing. It's not. It's totally normal. So, but I did just get some like organic tomato basil sauce. Feel free to make your own with the recipe that I just gave you or get a jar, whatever. Um, and literally, you're just gonna add the jar to the zucchini noodles and that's pretty much it. We're gonna let that chill there for a little while so that the noodles can cook. 
But if you have a homemade sauce, you know, that's cool. But um, it's best if it cooks into the sauce because it kind of like absorbs the sauce. Does that okay. make sense? No, it does make sense. It's delicious. So Just it's sort like of the like noodle with right. the water. Exactly. But see, when I make like spaghetti with noodles, I mean, I've used gluten free noodles at home, but when I do use noodles, I usually do the noodles separate and don't mix them into the sauce, which some people think is weird. What? I think that's, I thought you has. You're supposed to make it, no? Well, that's how I always made it, like growing up, where it's like you put the pasta in the bowl and then you pour the sauce on top. But like, then everybody thought it was crazy because I wasn't just mixing them in the same pot. I don't know. Cause like my sauce to noodle ratio has to be right. And then right. when you like you add the cheese, noodles. it still has to be the right ratio. And when you mix it together and then put it in the fridge, the noodles are gonna like soak up all your sauce. And like, I want lots of sauce. So that's my little stoner rant about why I put noodles on the side. But um, yeah, so I'm gonna put a lid on this and just kind of let it hang out for a minute um, to cook those noodles down. And then we'll add the um, olive oil on top whenever it's uh, ready. But uh, yeah, so this little uh, spiralizer thing, I probably like a little too much, but it um, comes with like five blades, I think. And like I have a couple of the other blades at home, but like one of them is like a flat blade. I'm about to say, so it hasn't been setting, so it seems like it's pretty thin. These, this is actually a thicker noodle. It also has, um, this one is like an angel hair. Like it's like a three millimeter. Mm. So this is like a five millimeter. So this one's supposed to be more like an angel hair. Does it do snow cones? No, bitch. How's it gonna do I a like snow cone? I like versatile things. <laughs> I like versatile <laughs> items. You better buy a snow cone maker. I mean, what? can't you attach like a like How a big stoned are you right now? Have you already been having birthday no, fun? <laughs> is that what's Stop going on? <laughs> Although they do make this really, if anybody wants to buy me a present, on my wish list on Amazon right now is a $120 snow cone maker. So if y'all yes. want to infuse snow cones, buy it for me so I can make them for you. How would you infuse the snow cones? See, that's what I'm saying. So you're gonna take, so basically, the only thing that's on snow cones is crushed ice and the syrup that goes on top, right? So infusing the syrup. So you infuse the syrup. Make a simple syrup with infused sugar or tincture. I'd recommend you use the infused sugar, which I've given you all the recipe for. Plenty of times. Multiple times, or if you need it again, it's two parts sugar, one part tincture, lowest setting in your oven, stir it every 20 minutes till the alcohol is evaporated. And that's it. <laughs> um, you so, can tell she's done it before, obviously. Yeah, lots of times. <laughs> so I'd recommend that you just make a simple syrup out of the infused sugar um, and then add flavorings to it. Like they make flavorings that you can get. You can get more natural ones, you can use juice. If you don't want to use natural ones and you want to be real lazy, you can get the like green apple or raspberry My or whatever. My question like, is, drops. how do you make a red, blue, and green? Food coloring. <laughs> they make vegetable food coloring though. So like if you really wanted to be like, like if I wanted to make it like, I'd probably make it with some kind of a fruit punch or like not like the Hawaiian punch but like you know a nice one with like real fruit in it and like I'd make like a I'd get the juice and I would infuse it with the sugar and maybe we'll do a show on that somebody needs to buy me the snow cone maker so that I can do a show on how to make Chipping infused snow cones. put a jar out before the summer ends <laughs> yes you don't be hitting those things in Halloween it don't really work like that exactly so I feel like I need to make another zucchini what do you think um yeah because they're all standing around like really hungry looking so. I know <laughs> <laughs> and it does smell good, actually. It does smell really good. Oh, can I try? Huh? Can I try it? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. Perfect. So let's get a new, let's get a new little plate for you. Yes, please. Something fresh. <laughs> Bitch. <laughs> <laughs> As you can tell, we're doing it old school right now. No gloves, so yeah. no judgment. I wash my hands. It's going in the pan to be cooked. If somebody in the audience doesn't want to eat it, that's totally fine. I totally respect that. We're just working on the fly today with what we had. Yes. Have you ever been food safe certified? Yes, I was in food service for a long time. I was a manager, Same. I've been a bar, I've been every position in a restaurant you can think of, oh. other than bartending, because I bartended at a strip club. <laughs> True story. So, so they had you cook in there too? At the strip club? Uh-huh. No, I was just oh. a bartender. Oh, shit, my bad. <laughs> I cooked at the restaurant. Uh, I've worked at lots of restaurants. I worked in a couple restaurants in different food locations. So many. A lot of food safety. So I put it in there. Yeah. Is that correct? What about yep. here? No, that's fine. You basically just need to make sure that some of it's on there. Yep. And then you're going to hold this and you're going to get how to use some pressure, but you're going to spin it while using pressure. Does that make sense? Okay. I might hold break that. it if you tell me too much. So. Okay, ready? I got you. There you go. See? Oh my God, y'all. So if it's this. not coming out as fast, then oh, use a little bit more pressure. I want them to see this. <laughs> Look at this, America. ¿Cómo se llama esto? I don't this? know what you're saying. What is this called? Briefton's? Yeah, Briefton's five blade, um, what's the word? Br uh, spiralizer. spiralizer. I got it on Amazon. Okay, okay. 
I see this. I'm looking at the. So I did it with a potato on the same setting, and I will say that like. Um, curly fries wise, they, I think I need to like play with it a little bit more. If I deep fried it, they definitely would have been more like fries. They kind of tasted like a cross of a hash brown and a fry, but like, I'm not complaining because I definitely ate the whole thing. Um, right. so I have some secrets when it comes to fries because I used to work for a, a spot that's known for their fries. Five guys. Shut up, let me tell you more. Camera girl. <laughs> you don't work there anymore. Who cares? Like, yeah, but they believe someone like, oh, you sharing our secrets. <laughs> do you work there anymore? No. Did you I do sign not. some sort of agreement? No, hell then no. Then fuck them. So not really though, because y'all's burgers are well, great. And y'all do it on a lettuce wrap, so like the food's all great. the kudos to five guys. The food's great, the prices are Ridiculous, but it's they are. But they give you a ton of food. I will say that. It's like of the ingredients, in the, I'm not trying to like plug five guys here, but like the ingredients are are pretty actually pretty good. That's what makes the burgers good. And I hear the employees, you. People that work there are great. Um, different comments for the management and stuff like that. But that's an every food service job. Like they, we all had a manager that like we hated. Like that's just. I don't know any restaurant I've worked in that didn't have at least one crappy manager. Right, right. Luckily, I've had a very, um, I was blessed with a couple great bosses that taught me a lot of great things. But um, yeah, if you need some secrets on those fries, I got you. <laughs> I mean, they make them like the same way that like my dad would make um, French fries, like in peanut oil and whatnot, right? Yeah, peanut oil is the best way to make it. It's just uh, the way you double fry it. Yeah, like to like par fry Free it cook. first. Free yeah. cook and cook, so that's how you get that crunchy outer, outerness and then soft inside like mashed potatoes. <coughs> but, so how many zucchinis do we add here in total? Three. Three. Yep, and that's what I brought with me. So that's all of them. Oh, yes. hold on. Get that piece right there. Somehow the end ended up the in there. But. <coughs> I'm not sick, I promise, by the way. My throat's just dry, I'm about to have a drink. You are about to have a drink? Yeah, well not like a drink drink, it's not like it's not that kind of show. I'd say, girls, happy hour right now if you think about it. I don't really drink like that, though. So I was scared. I don't either. I was thinking about that the other day. They're like, oh, like, I've been getting messages today for my birthday. Like, oh my God, drink up. Da, 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 da. I was like, if you knew me better, you would know I'm that big of a drinker. Yeah, it just, I'm like past that point in my life. And like, anytime people like go out for a drink, like, I just don't see the appeal, I think. Like you go out, you go out for drinks, and you spend like ten dollars on like one drink. You know, you can get like a whole bottle of wine for that. Like, what are you wasting your money on? Like, and it's more just like about the social thing. But like, right. I'm a stoner. Like, I would much rather sit around with you and get stoned than I would like get drunk and like somebody pukes and like somebody has sex with somebody they didn't want to have sex with, but they really did. Like, you it's know, or whatever. Like, I don't have time for all that. Like, life's too short for all that drama. And in my experience, alcohol just brings a lot of drama that I don't have time for. That's why I work with the devil's lettuce and not the devil's water. I love you. <laughs> I love you. Yeah. Um. Well, I have those conversations all the time with my family. Like, back in Mexico, they're like, oh, let's go drink beers. And I'm just like, okay. But they don't see the enthusiasm in my face compared to, like, the next guy. And I'm just like, I'm not a heavy drinker. I'm a social drinker. But Same. Like, I'll have, like, a glass of wine occasionally. Like. Yeah, and then they're like, oh, do you smoke? And I'm like, smoke what? Obviously, the stoner, like, response is always smoke what? <laughs> right. That's and how I'm you know like, I'm like, the I don't smoke cigarettes. Are. I do smoke <laughs> cannabis. And then they're like, da, da, da. And I'm like, look. And I tell them straight up, I'm like, I do partake in the devil's lettuce, but not the <laughs> devil's water. And they're like, what you mean by that? And I break it down. I'm like, this causes this. This causes that. There's a big like cognitive dissonance like in society just about like alcohol versus cannabis. And I really don't like the comparison often because like I one is medicine, one is not. Like you know what I mean? Like I, I so yeah, I've I never mean, heard anyone alcohol say in and of itself med. does have purposes. Like I make tincture with Everclear, which is alcohol. Like um, I'm not against alcohol. Like I said, I drink wine. Like I'm not anti-alcohol. I just don't like the constant comparison because like they're not the same. Like one kills people, one doesn't. Like you know what I mean? Like so I feel like it's just like a and there's a lot of people. There's same people who are like anti-weed are usually not anti-alcohol, and I just find that to be like a really unfair double standard and it's like just showing that they have no idea what they're talking about. But at least the stigmas are changing. They are, thankfully. Um, yeah. Like most things, it's taken some time, but we're finally getting there. I think that we still have lots of work to do, especially in the, um, the 
legalization issues of like, you know. At the federal level and stuff like that. Yeah. How it's, you know, classified and how it's doing. We're not going to get into that, right? That's like a whole conversation. Yeah, that's like a whole conversation that we'd have to get like, maybe we'll just have like a sesh show where we just sit here and eat junk that food. And like beautiful. rant about the patriarchy and we like do prohibition. That once a month. I'm down. Um, I'm down if you'd like to see that, leave a right comment there. in the chat below. So, I'm going to let this mellow out for a few more minutes, but I just wanted to check it. But, like, see how, like, the noodles are, like, cooking into the sauce? Right. So, like, I like pasta in general to be, like, al dente, and, like, I really right. like, um, like, I make spaghetti squash as, that's what I used to do before I started doing these, was I'd do, like, spaghetti squash instead of noodles. Like, poke it and, like. Yeah, and then you have to, like, scrape out the, like, you know, you have to, like, have you ever made one before? I've never made it. I've seen it plenty of times on Facebook. Yeah, yeah. So, like, after you cook it, then you, like, cut it and you take the seeds out, and then you, like, basically just take a fork and, like, scrape it, and, like, the inside of the spaghetti squash turns into, like, little thin something like spaghetti noodles. So I so like, you're like it. you're like combing out with a fork the, the squash and it comes out like that, like that kind of like noodle-y texture. Right, exactly. Um, and how long should we be living this here on what you say, low, medium? Um, so that's gonna depend on your stove. <laughs> But I would recommend somewhere between low and medium. Like, you know, use your own judgment. If simmering is fine. If it's like hardcore boiling, turn it down some. Um, you burn. don't want it to burn. Um, and it's really easy for tomato sauce to burn, so. And I think it, like what happens, why some people burn a lot of things so they get impatient. Like they're starving and they're like, oh my God, let me make something to eat. And they just have it on high thinking they'll cook quicker. Doesn't usually work like that. Nope. <laughs> Try that with a grilled cheese and you're gonna end up with burnt bread and no melted cheese. Ew, could you imagine like the burnt toast and just like the cold cheese? Like, <laughs> like I've done that. Like anything that I tell you not to do is probably because in some point in my life I've done that. Like not waiting for the water to boil before you put in noodles, yes. Don't do that. Right, like right. when people when people said you have to wait for it to boil, you really do. Otherwise, they're gonna stick together. It does take a minute for stuff to boil. Right, and just wait. Like the, you know, like Grandma used to say, like never let, like a pot. Like what's the, what's the saying? Mm -mm. You know what I'm talking about? A watch pot never boils. That's it. You know, my grandma used to say that. I didn't really get it until I was like literally waiting on the pot to boil. You know what that I mean? That is a gospel in the kitchen I have not heard yet, and it makes entire sense. Really? Yes. My grandma used to say that all the time. That makes because you can use it for sense. way out the kitchen. That like shit that's would the never point. Never boil. Like, you can be staring at this thing for thirty minutes. And right. <laughs> and so you like take that into life. You know what I mean? Like don't just like, stand there waiting on something. Right. Like, oh, you know, good. go out and live your life and let it happen when it happens. Okay, little things. Yep. <laughs> Um, so how are you going to infuse this? With the olive oil. Yep, I, um, I'm going to check the chat right quick and see if we have any uh, questions or anything. Does anybody in the audience have any questions? Is it time to eat? No, not yet. <laughs> not yet. Almost. Alcohol lowers our vibrational frequency. That's not a thing I'm super educated on, so I couldn't really even reply to that. But um, Physician for the People could probably answer that though, so I would be happy to tag him on this whenever I'm finished, so. I heard coffee also has an effect on No clue, the brain. couldn't tell you. That all like starts like diving into a lot more spirit stuff that like I'm not quite into yet. It's not that I'm right. against it, totally not. Right. But I'm a former super conservative evangelical fundamentalist Christian who was raised pretty much like the Duggars. So at this point I'm real bitter about anything that remotely resembles religion in my life. So Aww. no idea. But no, uh, I carry my crystals on me all the time. Feel so. free to believe in the crystals and the energy and all of those things. And like I will not judge you and all of that. It's just not my thing yet. <laughs> <laughs> What'd you say? <laughs> What'd you say? He said he got that crystal energy over there if you look. Yeah, if it. you're looking for some crystal energy, check out Faded Mystics on Instagram and they will get you set up. <laughs> Actually, they will, they will. They you want to talk about it a little bit? <laughs> I mean, it is what it is. Like, <laughs> it depends what kind of vibration you're looking for. And I think. Uh, Don't you general, do tarot card readings too? Well, that's what I was about to say. So, like, not a lot of people like to dabble in those things because I, I think uh, there's a stigma for sure. Like my mom stigma. definitely told me that like the devil was gonna inhabit my body if I ever those talked to anybody that believed in those from things. Past generations telling us BS. <laughs> 
So, I mean... <laughs> I mean, I was legit scared, too, as, like, a kid. Like, if somebody told me that they were into, like, New Age, I was legitimately, like, this person's gonna put a demon in my soul. <laughs> like, I legitimately <laughs> was terrified. So, like, yeah, I totally, <laughs> I totally get it. I understand. The indoctrination runs deep. No judgment. <laughs> so, anyway. <laughs> no, but yeah, they, so what Beta Mystics is doing is doing tarot readings for anyone that's interested in a consultation. You get a beautiful gift with that, even to elevate higher into that vibration. So please check us out on Instagram, um, here at Listen Vision, Tuesdays and Fridays. Um, but yeah, have you ever got your cards read? So I have, like a couple of times. I, um, when I was like 13, one of my friends did that. Like she was like all into that. And I remember like thinking to myself that like, anyway, that I was doing something terrible. Like, right, like it, I might as well have been like messing with an Ouija board that I legitimately thought was gonna oh, like come back. And, uh, right, right, but that's how I felt about getting this tarot card reading when I was like 13, but I was like real rebellious at 13. So it was almost like I'm giving the finger to God like by getting this tarot card reading. So anyway, she told me that I would feel more accomplished in life if I ever finished something. And like, let me tell you, I am that person who starts a million things and does not finish so that could have very well been true or it could have totally just been coincidence that that's the true. card that she drew some people are but, really good at how to word things where it keeps you thinking right how to connect no pieces. I still remember that like super well even though it happened like too long ago for me <clears> to admit <throat> but like I, I did when I when I published my first book because my life before cannabis was a lot about um, writing so I used to tour all over the country and write romance books and all that fun stuff. But anyway, so when I published my first book, I got my tattoo because I was so proud of myself that I started something and finished it. Like I'm a perpetual college dropout. Like I've been to college like 10 times, dropped out every time. So like there's like very little, I finished high school. I did do that. Okay. Yeah. Come on. Yep. Yes, finished high school. Yeah, <laughs> but like um, I probably like, I'm not even that long away from like a legitimate degree because I've got so many credits from so many schools, but like I just don't care anymore. Like I'm past the point in my life where that would even like do anything useful for me. So, um, not that I'm like hating on education at all. I'm Kinda just- Kinda again, everyone will teach their own, so. Right. Yeah, and there is a point in life I think where some people get to where it just doesn't, like I think that we were like all told that like we needed college to do something with our lives, but I don't really think that's true. But why? So, but why? I mean, there's a lot of very successful people that never went to college, so it's not like it costs a lot of money, right? Like I've got student loan. Anyway, we're going into a <laughs> whole other rant. We really should just do like a smoke and talk about like life <laughs> things because that's definitely what we're doing. Um, <laughs> let's see. You want to test it and see if it needs any salt and pepper? Probably does. Probably. Probably does. You I meant to bring some night. like Parmesan cheese with me and I forgot it. So you gotta eat like the Ooh. whole noodle. Hold up, no, you gotta taste this because I'm not good with hot food. What? At all. What do you mean you're not good with I'm hot a, food? Like, I'm a room you're, temperature kind of girl, I don't do this. You better blow mm -hmm. on it, what is wrong with you? Do you not know how to blow on hot food? I do. Have you not learned that life skill yet? I did. Look at that. So, That's all one noodle. noodle. So this whole meal is, is vegan and gluten-free, um, low fat, but it won't be after I add this oil. Um, and yeah, so all those people that have been asking me for like not fat kid food, here you go. Blow it wasn't on me and not asking you for not fat I know, I know, food. you really wanted the like fat kid food. <laughs> good shit, bitch. Good shit. It's good shit. Does mm -hmm. it need salt and pepper? Uh, maybe a little bit of salt. No, 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 no salt. A little bit of pepper. Okay. Okay, thank God. You actually know how to season. I'm from the South. Like, that's, like, look, I totally understand, like, a lot of jokes that people make about people not seasoning food, I'm not gonna, like, go into all that. I agree with you. But I'm from the South, where it's, like, it's against religion to not season food. Like, I see, I see the same shit y'all do on Facebook, and I look at that and go, what the fuck is this? Look. So, like, I'm embarrassed. <laughs> For my mother's side audience. of the family, I am embarrassed. Everybody that's in not me. Everybody is looking like, how much pepper <laughs> she gonna put in it, though? <laughs> and she did the right thing. Yeah, um, y'all have no idea my spice cabinet at home. I don't even have a cabinet. I now have like a wall holder for all of the small bottles. And then I have a plastic container to hold all of the large bottles. And then like I've been cooking at my partner's house in Richmond. So I went and bought 
spices for their house, even though they had an entire cabinet full already, but it wasn't all the ones that I used, so I bought more. Funny joke, one year, so. one year for um, my birthday, Mars got me a spice rack. And it was the funniest thing ever because she asked, she kind of was like, I feel like you have everything. Like, what, what would you want right. if you wanted something? Right. And I, it was just a random conversation. Didn't even pay attention to it. Right. And I was like, oh, I would love a spice rack. The bitch got me a spice rack for my birthday. <laughs> That's like That was beautiful. Amazing. And I still thank her every day for that. She's not here right now, but love you. Anyways. Yeah. Well, some of the, the problem with a lot of spice racks, though, is that they're not big enough for like the big bottles. Oh, yeah. But they're like problem. too big for the little mini bottles. So I have one of those like, I think people use them for like shoes or whatnot, but they're from Ikea and they only have like six holders on them, but they're like big holders. You can fit like eight or nine spices in each one. So the thing about spicing, uh, like people know how to add spices, but I feel like people don't know how to marinate. So yes, that I agree with. That like, a I don't lot think of people it's like don't a common marinate. thing like to pick up growing up. It cook. should be just like seasoning your food should be a common sense thing people pick up but clearly that's not the case so i don't know what to tell you <laughs> like i yeah well it's like the change of society too like we're getting a lot of items already pre-cooked or prepared so Look, we're not learning the basics on how to you know chef it up in the kitchen yeah so even if something comes like pre-packaged like i always say that like i doctor up my food that's just what i do like i like notoriously put things like so i made this like cauliflower rice Mexican casserole like mm. two weeks ago. It was really good. It was basically like a Spanish rice casserole, no but invite. instead of rice, I used like cauliflower rice. And like, it was delicious and well seasoned, but when it was done, yeah, it was. I definitely added like, so I'm right now I'm obsessed with like the Taco Bell mild sauce and you can buy it at the store and you can put it on anything. I've been so, obsessed like, with that sauce since 1996. So like, right, the packets, but yeah. like you can buy the <laughs> bottle at the store. I'm telling you, just like you can buy the Olive Garden salad dressing at the store. Like they've stepped their game up, y'all. Like we can get this stuff at home. So <laughs> I've got the bottle, I'll put that on there and then I've like put sour cream and then you know that chili lime seasoning that I got for the corn? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so I was like, that'll probably be dank. And so I'm like putting that over it and like, like, I just had this whole thing and like my partner was like just sitting there staring at me when I was done. He's like, are you done? And I'm like, yeah, for now. <laughs> like, <laughs> I don't know. Like you can make, I've, I also was poor for a really long time as an adult. And like when you're poor and like all you have to eat is like ramen noodles and like box mac and cheese you and like not the craft kind, like up. the 33 cent shopper value kind. You know what I'm saying? And like you learn how to make that stuff taste good. Like I can make ramen, I can turn ramen noodles into a gourmet. <gasps> We should do a ramen noodle show. We if you guys want to see a ramen noodle show, <laughs> leave it in the comments below. Right. Yes, yes, because like I can take some everyday ramen and that turn it into like idea. a gourmet meal. So like that is a great idea. I'm All telling right. you, especially like if you don't have a lot of other things like. Soup is another thing that I'm really good at making, and the reason I'm good at making it is because you can just take random things that you got in cans or at the Dollar Tree, or you have some leftovers, you can turn it into a soup, believe me, and it'll be amazing, because you have to learn how to season it. Seasonings can change, like even if you are broke, you can't afford to go buy an electric skillet, whatever. Go spend like, $20 a month at max on seasonings. They don't even have to be the super expensive kind. Like just go spend like a small amount of money and invest in your seasonings and like you can completely change the way you're eating. 100%. The, the most boring foods will be delicious. <laughs> All right, so. This is pretty much done. Does anybody in the audience have any questions? Anyone? Questions? Is it time to eat? Yes, it is. Is anybody watching have any questions? If so, just leave them in the chat. We're gonna start plating this up a little bit. She hot. Yeah, we'll put it like that. Here, you wanna help? Here. So how are you gonna add the um the olive oil. I'm taking two out for staff, and then the rest I'm actually gonna infuse. Good point. Mm -hmm. So that's gonna be easy. Where's the knife? It's really smells Does it smell good? Dank. Um, so I'm gonna cut these because they're so long that there's no way I'm gonna be able to feed everybody here unless For they're For those that don't know, what does al dente mean? Does anybody know what al dente means? The camera, the camera shook its head now. I mean, it has a bite to it. Yes. 
technically it's tender to the bite. I don't actually know the exact, like, that, that's what's the word? Exact. Translation? It's tender to the bite. Tender to the bite? Yeah, I'm going to culinary school. It's tender to the bite. Tender to the bite, people. Yeah. Cool. I'm not Italian. But I just limp. know it tastes good. <laughs> So since the noodles were kind of long, we're just kind of like just we're cutting it, yeah, yeah, because otherwise we're not gonna be able to feed everybody in here. So let's see. So I'm taking two portions out for the staff that doesn't want an infuse, and somebody come gather this and take it to the office. That's too much. That needs to be cut. Yep. All right, now for infusing it. Ooh, showtime. Oh, I left my spoon down there. Can Not somebody, your special spoon. Is anybody available? Can you grab me something, Jeremy, you wonderful person? In this tote in here, there's a little box that has um, plastic cutlery in it. I need the one, I need a spoon. <laughs> and your plate is on the way into the office. You're welcome. Oh, thank or do you, you want me to make you one right now? You want me to make you a plate? They probably took it. <laughs> they probably did. Okay, hold on. Oh, he got it. All right, cool. All right, so I have a teaspoon. We're going to do two teaspoons for the whole thing. Three zucchinis, a jar. Uh, it depends on how dank your your oil is. Do we remember? Do you remember off the top of your head how much a teaspoon is? Because I do. Look, not off the top of my head, but I know that shit's strong as fuck. 78 so. milligrams for one teaspoon. So I did two teaspoons, so that's roughly 160, 158 milligrams. So the goal is always 20 milligrams on this show, but apparently. 20 milligrams is too much for some people. Jeremy. That's all can of so. a making that oil. <laughs> <laughs> what, are you, what 20 milligrams too much for? Um, okay, who wants to hear a really funny story about Jeremy? Okay, so last, so when I made the mac and cheese, those were about 20 milligrams. Did anybody else in here get high off just a cup of mac and cheese? No. No, it was about 20 milligrams. So he doesn't really eat edibles. I'm sure he's watching this show uh, in his office right now. But so he doesn't really eat edibles. So he came out like, I don't know, two hours later maybe, and he's like sweating profusely and his eyes are really wide and he's like looking around like this. And I literally texted him and was like, dude, are you okay? Cause like he looked like there was something seriously wrong and he messages me back and he's like, it's your fault. It was that mac and cheese. So know your tolerance and dose accordingly. He had a flashback back somewhere <laughs> with those eyes. So that's literally all I did was just put it in and stir it in. So right. you could also like toss the noodles in the olive oil. Um, would you stir fry the noodles? So you could do that. That's another way to do it. Um, but would it give it But I'd texture? recommend that you stir fry it with um, the sauce to with, impregnate it. Right, and also like that if you're gonna do that, that you still infuse, like use non-infused oil at first until you get them mostly cooked and then add the oil in. Gotcha. Cause you don't wanna be like converting all your THC. Anybody who's ready to eat is welcome to come up and get these plates as I make them. You want one? So the garlic bread, it would just be a can of butter. Yeah, but like, I I don't know if I'd, I don't know. I feel like it would taste too much like cannabis and like, hmm? Um, I feel like it would taste too much like cannabis and like, I'm kind of picky in that way of like, I don't really want it to like overpower eat, taste, taste with cannabis. Good, you know? yeah. And like garlic bread is like religion to me. And so, um, like, I don't want it to taste all like weed. Like, I would rather like infuse a nice lovely dip like of some kind and dip the bread in that. Um, ooh, like you could definitely make like a fondue. Ooh, we should do a fondue episode. She get all these ideas during the show and then we're like, yo. And then I like all weekend, I'll be like, what am I gonna do next week? You I don't know. This. You know, wanna know when I finalized what I was gonna make today? Today. today. <laughs> <laughs> Although sometimes I like do plan it ahead. So I think next week, did we wanna do a ramen episode? Is that what we decided? Yes, yes. Okay, cool. So no problem because I they also make gluten free ramen so I can actually like get some that I can eat so that's always is a it the same price? 
Hell no. That regular ramen is what, like 30 cents or 40 cents or something like that? Like Keeping if that. Back. The gluten free one is like, the cheapest one I found was like a buck 50. That was the cheapest. Uh, it's a rip off. Well, I mean, ramen's been keeping America alive since 1953. Amen. So. <laughs> Keeping college kids fed and not dying. <laughs> <laughs> I was at in Walmart, uh, or it was one of the, I think it was Target, and they actually had like a, you know how they have rice cookers and toasters and stuff like that? Yep. They had a ramen maker. They didn't want to call it a ramen maker, but it was obviously a ramen, a ramen maker. maker. So it was just like, I guess like a makeshift little rice cooker type thing. Right. But you can make ramen in it. And I thought that was interesting. Like that's some lazy, ridiculous. Who doesn't? Girl, have, who you doesn't know, some people don't know how to cook. Okay, I don't care if you don't. You don't have to lo know how to cook to make ramen. That's like the. No, no. I mean, like, little kids can make ramen in the microwave without ever. You don't even have to like doctor it up. It's good with just the seasoning pack if you really want it. You just get sick right. of it. Right, we all been there. You just eat the ramen just as is. No water. Hey, no and if problem. you don't have any chips in your house and you really want some chips, you can definitely crunch up those ramen noodles and sprinkle that seasoned packet right on top and you have some delicious little chips. I'm telling you, people think I'm crazy when I say that. The jail <laughs> Jailhouse or not, it's delicious and you know it. The jailhouse chips. So, true story, I lived in a group home for like all four years of high school, so like some of those types of things are like that institutionalized behavior that I definitely got from there. Right. Um, like adding ranch dressing to everything that tastes terrible, that was something we did there. You did that too? Everything. Literally everything. It, other than like breakfast food or sweets, if it was anything savory, it didn't matter. We were like throwing um, ranch on it. <clears throat> I would do that for like especially spicy food. Spicy food? Yeah. yeah. Just to like, you're very like, welcome. Uh, like a lot of Indian curry, sometimes they were just too spicy. You put ranch on Indian curry? Okay, that's just a stoner thing. I don't really know what to tell you other than that. <laughs> it leveled out the spice and it tasted good because it was chicken. I mean, I don't doubt that it tasted good, but like Indian food is good on its own. We already did a curry episode. And that curry had me... My bad. It was really good. It was Anybody really else? Good. Bulgogi? Well, there is more. You can come get more. <laughs> so if you would like to come get some free food, come out to Listen Vision any Tuesday from 5 to 6 for this show. And everybody in the audience gets free food, as you see. Nobody here paid for anything. And does the audience like the food? Yeah. They love it. <laughs> So one other thing that I will say about spaghetti specifically, or like anything with like marinara, so like pizza even, is that the cannabis taste hides really well in the seasoning that's in spaghetti sauce. So like, do, does it taste like super tree-ish to anybody? Because it's an herb and there's tons of other herbs in spaghetti sauce, so like they blend really well together. That's a good point. Because I think a lot of people are just used to like their treats. Right. You know? Anybody who wants it is welcome to come get it. And it's all vegetarian too? All vegetarian, vegan. all vegan, gluten free, the whole nine. You can refill me. Right there. That's fine, I already put it on a plate. All right. So what would be a side to this? A salad, on the very first episode of the show, I made an infused salad dressing. Maybe we should just do a whole salads episode. So, a whole ramen episode, a whole salad dress show? Okay, so you can infuse salad dressing pretty easy because it's an oil, so you just add it into the base oil. Um, and yeah, so I would do like a salad with it. I'd probably do like a garlic bread or right. something, or right. like baguettes if you can't eat like gluten. Udi's makes a really good French roll that you can get at most grocery stores. Um, it's expensive, so I don't suggest you buy it for fun if you don't need to. And my last question is, yes. I've seen people do mo different things with like leftover spaghetti. Anybody else? What would oh. you recommend with this? Um, so I make a spaghetti grilled cheese. Let me tell you all about this real quick. Oh, okay. So, spaghetti grilled cheese. You take that garlic bread, right? If you've got like some like Texas toast or like whole wheat bread or like whatever, if you want to be like good about it. Uh -huh. um, and you like make garlic bread. And then, so you sprinkle the butter, or you put the butter on, put the butter in your pan, but then on the bread too, you wanna to put a very light amount, not enough for it to stick. 
You want to sprinkle some garlic powder on it or whatever you like to make your garlic bread with. Some people like garlic salt. Um, then you're going to add a piece of cheese, usually provolone or mozzarella is my recommendation. The leftover spaghetti, another piece of cheese, the other side of the garlic bread, and then you're just going to brown it on both sides. And if you want to be a real fat kid, you can dip it in ranch. I'm telling you, it's so good. Like, it will, like, blow your mind. It's so good. And if you're real lazy, if you're real, real lazy and you don't want to sit there and, like, flip the grilled cheese, in a pinch, you can literally take some olive oil or olive oil spray, spray both sides of the bread, put the garlic on there, and put it on a cookie sheet in your oven, flip it halfway, and then you don't have to mess with it. And it's still good, trust me. You hear that, America? If you know someone that's in dire need of food, come see Princess <laughs> Come see Princess B. I she will feed, feed you. you. Yes, she this will is give true. Give me the recipes of how to be fed. I will. You will be like fat and fed in Anybody before you even games? know it. Visit our homegirl right here. Yes. When? And if you want to learn how to cook, you can come to Elevated Roots Academy on Saturdays. Yes, this Saturday. Uh, this Saturday, we're doing a class on decarbing and then making tincture, oil, and butter. Um, and then we're doing a class on the flowering stage for cultivation. And then my other class is the um, pain management class. So if you or mention. anybody you know has like any kind of pain management struggles and you want to come to this class to learn how to like target those things with cannabis, uh, just DM us on Instagram. Yeah, hit us up on Instagram. We're here to help. Yep. Anytime, you can come in anytime. Yep. Um, you don't have to wait for like the semester to end or anything like that. So yep. it's there for everybody. We, we get a lot of new students every, every class. Every so. class, we pretty much get at least one new student. It's been yeah. pretty consistent. So, so that's great. Hit us up on Instagram at Elevated Roots Academy. If you want to reach out to me any other time, you can follow me on Instagram at Cannabis DC on Facebook, um, also at Cannabis DC. Birthday, Sal. And we've got a present for Sal. How do I blow this out? Just blow you it. Smoke it, man. You smoke it. Did you get permission? Y'all gonna say Did you get permission? Yes. Y'all okay. gonna say happy birthday? Happy birthday! Happy birthday. <laughs> Thank you guys. Who rolled this? Oh no! <laughs> that's why, America. It was in there so that you wouldn't get cupcake on the mouth. Oh, that's so nice of you. <laughs> Boom. Yay! Gracias, so everybody get on Facebook and wish Sal um, a happy birthday. <laughs> on Facebook, he's at Frida's Kitchen and on Instagram at Frida's Kitchen. Yes. Thank you for putting that all out there. Yes, thank you. <laughs> yep. All right, we'll see you next week. Bye, guys.